one of the last videos I was uh, I was making was showing you how I'm quilting my large quilt. I have a if you're new to this and just tuning in, I've been making this quilt over a period of about six months uh, with several of my YouTube family here who are following me. And each unit, each block, each step of the way, each sashing, from the very beginning to this part here, I have a playlist, Jean's Block Party 2021. My playlist where every single block I am showing you exactly how to make, step by step by step. This is a beginner's quilt. And I have been, I have been sent some photographs of people who have, showed, who have made this quilt um, up until the piecing top part. I am now qu uh, on my Facebook page. It's been wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. What great way to use up scraps. Um, I'll put a picture of my quilt um, it, here uh, at the end of this little video. But I wanted to show you, um, I wanted to share with you how I'm actually quilting. Um, I was, I was, I gave a little sneak preview, my, one of my last videos of me doing my circles, okay? Um, but if, if you're new to this and, and um, are trying to figure out free motion quilting, this is sort of like a, 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 the cliff notes of how I free motion quilt. I have here a Juki sewing machine. It's a TL 2200 QVP Mini. This is a straight stitch mechanical machine. It's no computerized. It's just a, a metal heavy duty machine. Oh, before you ask, the flowers I have on it are called rub on tattoos, rub on decals. They're called floral tattoos and they are from urbanelements.com. Everybody says, where did you get the flowers? Some of them are rubbing off a little bit, but that's okay. I do have a LED strip lighting under here. G absolute game changer. Let me show you. Let me show you. That is without that is just the sewing machine light. Okay? It's okay. That is with my sewing machine light. This is a game changer, about $12 or so, $10 or $12 at, a, at a, um, any hardware store or online. I, I absolutely heartily, heartily recommend this LED light strip here. It just attaches to the back onto the, onto the, um, to the power cord over here. Um, so this is my machine that I'm using, uh, any basic machine. This is a basic machine. I have set my stitch length to zero, okay? I've set, set my stitch length to zero. Obviously, every single machine is different. Um, whether you have a computerized machine, you have to check your manual um, for, the, for the settings for your own specific machine. This is for my Juki here. I have lowered the feed dogs, okay? The feed dogs are the little teeth that pull your fabric along. Right there. They're little teeth right there that pull your fabric along. This machine has the ability to just click over my feed dogs drop. That means my, there's nothing there. There's no, there's no grabbing there on my needle plate there. The teeth are down underneath. That means my needle is just going up and down. And I'm doing the actual moving of my fabric as opposed to the machine moving my fabric in a straight line. Free motion quilting means you can move your quilt forwards, sideways, backwards, all over. 
you're doing this and the needles just going up and down so I have many videos on free motion quilting but this is just a little this is just a little um, uh, refresher if you if you're new to this and want to figure out free motion quilting it's not easy at first it is not an easy skill at first I absolutely because your tendency is to want to go oh oh no oh no what do I do the needles going up and down in one space and then you go like that and you you jump and oh and you're and you're you're um you have the tendency to to grab the fabric and the the um the needles going too fast or the needles going too slow it really is a bit of a practiced art my first attempts were dreadful <laughs> and also your your shoulders go way up around your ears and you're like oh no and you're you're stitching within a, an inch of your life but once you get going it's you need to hear the machine sound you need to hear you need to feel the foot pedal so it's it's engaging your brain now I was saying in my previous video I like doing circles okay I like doing circles and I was saying I'm a little bit of a one-trick pony I like doing circles for free motion quilting I do other things with stencils and and marking and feathers but for for this right now for this sort of refresher course I'm just doing my circles okay now as I was saying in my last video on this particular quilt here um, I have say right here there's a nine patch one two three four five six seven eight nine this is a six inch finished block okay this is how I'm going to quilt this my sashing here this is my white sashing here okay and this is a block well I'm going to I'm going to if you can see I've done I've I've done one take this block from here to here I've done one two three four five six circles here all right forget these in the forget those right there so right now I'm I can see that I can make this is six inches I can make six one inch circles that's about the size of an American quarter 25 cent piece that's what I'm thinking in my mind okay so what I do is I've, I've stitched down this this in the ditch right here I've stitched that sashing and I've stitched along here this is all quilted this is not as you can see as I was explaining in my previous video I'm quilting from the from the outside from the inside of my quilt out to the outside this is all pinned do you see that this is all loose this is all pinned no I've not stitched the dish I've not stitched in the ditch any of my sashings down I'm working completely from the inside out stitching my sashings as I go I have never used a walking foot I have one I've never even taken it out of the plastic um, I am using my free motion quilting foot this is an open toe foot again each one of your own specific machines will have a specific free motion quilting so once you set Your machine with your stitch length your feed dogs down and then your tension properly your your fab your thread has to be tensioned properly through the tension wheel whatever your machine setting is then you're ready to go now again just like in many quilting stitches what I do is I turn my hand wheel I'm going down right here for me for my circles which I'm going to do two four six I'm putting my needle down right in the center of my sashing there bringing my big bringing my bobbin thread up okay uh, that the mecha mechanism is you it loops the bobbin thread there's my thread there's my bobbin thread and there's my top thread that means that I will not on the back of my quilt get a nasty little um, nest of, of seams of, of thread that little bird's nest okay my backing is absolutely just like just nice and um, stitched beautifully there's no um, threads to be cut except when I finish which I will show you so there's my top and my bobbin thread up okay I'm leaving it down put my needle down and then I'll put my presser foot down okay now as you can see I don't roll anything I just sort of scrunch it I'm getting towards the 
at this end of my quilt, the sides of my quilt, I, my quilt here is 88 inches long, uh, 88 inches wide, 88 inches square, okay? So I had to, from this point here, my needle to here, I had to get 44 inches of quilt in here. I did it. I started at the very center of my quilt and I worked my way from the center on outside. And this is, this is how much I have left. This is my outside border here. This is my, you can see my batting and my backing. So I have this much. I've done a, I've sort of done a, a square up until this point. I'm just keeping my quilt is exactly symmetrical. So I'm working on this part here. So I put my needle down and I'm just going to start. Now I'm, I have a foot pedal and I'm just going to listen. I'm going to listen to my machine and also I'm concentrating on what's right in front of me. Okay. My machine is not dragging on my needle. I mean, my, um, my, my quilt sandwich is not dragging on my needle. It's not taut. Okay, so it's nice and loose, but flat right in front of me. Okay, it's, it's, I'm supported behind me. I'm supported in front of me, and I'm supported to the side of me. I have a table to the side of me over here. And again, I will I'll attach a few pictures. So now I'm going to concentrate on, from the center, making a circle. Making a circle of the size of a quarter. Okay, now... Free motion quilting, you do have to go back on yourself, okay? I, I know there's a lot of free motion quilters that, that, that can hop from one point to another. I don't know how to do that. It's too hard. So as you can see here, I had to go back on myself to go to get my circles, okay? So I'm going to start. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six circles. Now I've done one, and I'm going to come back to the middle the bottom middle of my first circle because when you're doing circles <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm the queen of circles right you have to make sure that your circle is completed your stitching is all the way around your circle believe it or not your eye would actually see if it's sort of like not if it's sort of like a point and then you come back so go, by all means just go back around your circle with the same stitching um, this is not a, I mean, uh, hopefully I'm going to put my quilt in a quilt show. It's absolutely not a winner because there's met ways that you don't do that, but I don't know how to do that. And I just, I go back and I've done it enough so that I can go back and, and go back on my circle stitching. So I'm there at the bottom middle, and then I'm going to do another quarter size circle. I can eyeball it within my sashing. Do you see that? I've not gone I've I've not gone into that block and I've not gone into that sashing. I've kept my circle, my stitching, which you were you will see within this sashing. So uh, then I'll come back again, I'm coming back on myself and I'm coming to the bottom of that the bottom middle of that circle. Okay? And then I'm going to do another. And that was a bit small, so I'll just do a little bit larger and I'm aiming to do a circle. Do you see what I'm saying? There's going to be two circles in this white sashing there and there. This will be a bit bigger. Coming back to the bottom middle. Finishing up my circle. Now, this quilt has, as I was saying, one inch sashing, okay? One inch sashing here. So now, I, I, right here, to, to, to coincide with, this, with the um, horizontal sashing over here, I'm just going to do a circle there. And then, as you can see here, this block is different. This is a four patch. So the way it's there, I'm going to be doing one, two, three circles in the, in the space of this four patch. So I'm gonna do one here in the sashing. Coming to the bottom middle. I'm readjusting and adjusting my quilt all the while. And I'm just concentrating right, right what's in front of me. That's the important thing. You tackle a quilt inch by inch. That's it. And it's amazing how quickly it works up, whichever, whatever quilting pattern you are going to be using. Okay. And as I always say, I think free motion quilting, it's a beginner. It's a, it's more of an expert skill that beginners should learn because you can quilt your quilt so much quicker and so much prettier if you perfect free motion quilting. So why not perfect it when you begin? 
it's 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 just a skill it's just a quilting skill so again so one two three circles okay and then another one two three circles and I will continue one right there in my sashing and I'm going to see what I have coming up okay it's another one two three one two three so I end up with six I end up with six one inch circles all the way around my white sashing of my quilt Now I went a bit, a bit into the sashing, that gray and white, that's okay, it's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna come back there. And what I'm doing is I'm listening to my machine. As you can see, oh, as you can see, I don't wear gloves. A lot of quilters wear gloves. I, don't, I had gotten gloves, they're called machine niggers, uh, one certain brand. I had gotten gloves when I started and I felt I'd washed my hands really good really good every 10 minutes or so I'll get up and wash my hands um, the gloves got really crummy I don't know the glo the fingertips got really dirty it, brown I'm like oh my goodness I'm working with my quilt but I didn't like that at all and I quite like feeling my fabric when you're free motion quilting you need a slippery bed there's a lot of there's a called a supreme slider I've just done I did this in the beginning with a, um, a silicone spray that you can got buy, and then I just buffed it and buffed it as you can see this machine is what three years old I just buffed it and buffed it and buffed it and buffed it and it's really nice and slippery you do need a nice slippery bed I do have as you can see I have a large extension table on my bed which if you have your grandmother's or an auntie's machine you might want to invest in some kind of table for your machine um, after market because if not your quilts sort of going to be dragging it's going to sort of fall off at this point and drag over here and as you can see my quilt is lovely and flat right where I want to stitch it and my hands are lovely and relaxed they're relaxed but they're controlling my fabric okay so come to the middle I'm listening to my machine I'm moving my fabric not a lot I'm not like oh 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 I'm not doing that I'm just letting the needle paint I'm just visualizing my needle as a paint brush and I'm just painting a little circle coming back on myself yes and as you can see I'm not moving my I'm not moving the quilt hugely it's not a matter of like you know moving the quilt hugely it's almost like driving a car you're not steering like this you know you're steering you know you're correcting yourself a little bit at a time you know what you know like kids get in the car and you want to you know steer but that's not how you steer you know your car is just gentle movements it's nice and smooth my hands are firm but they're not like you know they're not like oh like that they're just guiding my fabric around the, my 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 um artist's paintbrush needle here <laughs> And my last circle and when you're free motion quilting to end my stitching you obviously um, if you're new you obviously would have pushed your back button you know you would have pushed your reverse right well with free motion quilting what I do is I just keep I just let the needle paint a few stitches in the same hole that means it's securing my bottom and my top thread and that's it so I've done that right there I'll pick up I'll put, pick up my presser foot and my needle and I'll just cut my thread right there and then what I, to find my to find my bobbin thread I hold it there and then I just push it and there's my bobbin thread right there and I just cut it 
And there, there are my, there's my lovely line of circles on the back. You want to make sure you always practice on a practice piece, obviously to get the tension correct. And you might have to, you might have to work at it a little bit to get the tension right because some machines are, are a bit of a pain um, before they get set up properly um, in order to, to, to get your free motion quilting stitches good. But once you're dialed in, I always say that, once you're dialed in, to your free motion quilting. It's a life changer. And your, your, your regular quilts that you would perhaps just be stitching, which is fine, maybe in a grid, it, you know, that's absolutely fine. It's how I started that. But it really does bring some life to your quilts. As you can see, I sort of stitch, I sort of quilted each block sort of in a different mat. Well, these, are, these nine patches are all done the same, but in this sort of curly cue, outlining each block this like a double bow block as you can see i sort of outlined my my bow there and did a little decorative stitch but that's because i could go forward i could go sideways i could go backwards i could go everywhere and that is the beauty of free motion quilting so i hope these are some little tips for you guys um when you want to go quilt a quilt, don't start on a brand new quilt. What I recommend a lot of people do is go get a dollar store hanker, um, a bandana and a piece of batting, an extra piece of batting, and another, maybe another dollar store bandana. Sandwich it together, maybe with a little bit of spray basting or, or pins if you like, and then set your machine up and just what, what, is, what I always tell people to begin with, start on a piece of paper Right, start writing, let me just see, uh, do I have a pen? Start writing your name. Okay, here's a piece of paper. So what you do, here's my name. So J-E-A-N. Okay, that's my name, right? So what I will do is I will, with a pen, like imagine J-E-A-N, okay? And then... What I will do is I will, on a piece of practice, I will stitch out my name because my brain has been wired to do that cursive pr right, uh, printing. So you can even do it on a piece of paper with a, a, dull, a dull needle with no thread. You could just stitch J, E, you're gonna, you're gonna mess up, uh, uh, A, and you might wanna do it even bigger. So like it would be like a, a large, a large exercise so you start there Jay, and you come around and you're gonna you know you know you're gonna mess up a bit but then you come over here and you do a loop you might get some eyelashes because you've gone too fast on that curve that's what happens you you have to slow down you have to keep your machine sound your foot pedal and your hands all and your brain all in order but once you learn how to free motion quilt it's very freeing. Again, practice, practice, practice. I would love to hear how some of you get on. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Love from the true loves, love from Jean. Bye-bye. <laughs>